Hi everybody and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. Um, what I'm going to be presenting to you today is my design for an 8-speed manual Ferrari gearbox. Now of course the idea for this gearbox came about from one of the latest 2021 LEGO Technic sets. I think it's set number 42125. It's the a Ferrari 488 GTE race car. Now I haven't actually got that set myself but I've seen many reviews on YouTube and a lot of reviewers mentioned that that car did in fact not have any sort of gearbox built inside of it. So that kind of gave the idea for this project uh, was to design an 8 speed gearbox that kind of matched the uh, actual Ferrari specifications and this is what I've come up with and I'll be presenting this to you today. So the first thing I did for this project was to look up on Wikipedia the uh, actual gear ratios for the Ferrari 488 car. Now 488 is actually kind of a, a base number for many different uh, 488 uh, series of cars, uh, GTE being one of them now. They all seem to have the same gearbox in common and it's got it's an 8 speed automatic. Now it's hard enough in LEGO to make a 2 speed automatic so I decided to make a manual gearbox and the gearing ratios that are shown on Wikipedia for the Ferrari 488 are as follows. So we've got, uh, like I said, we've got eight gears, uh, one to seven, of course, going forwards, and one reverse gear. So the first gear has got a ratio, and this is the ratio between the engine and the uh, um, the uh, drive shaft of the car. So that means a ratio of 3.33 means the engine has to rotate three times for one rotation of the crankshaft. Uh, so gear one, it's uh, 3.334. Gear two, about 2.285. Gear three. 1.728, gear 4, 1369, gear 5, 1.115, gear 6 is 0.875, and gear 7 is 0.642. Then the reverse gear is uh, very close to the first gear, it's in reverse 2.979, so it's actually slightly faster than, uh, than going forwards. Now, of course, in Lego, I'm always used to um, thinking of the reverse ratio, so I tend to think of a low gear as having a low ratio, so I, what I've done, I've uh, reversed all these ratios in order to be able to I guess work with it uh, the way I'm familiar with. So if we inverse these ratios uh, then in that case we get the reciprocal of each of these values and this column over here shows the reverse ratios so in the case of gear 1 which is 0 0.3 then we go to 0 0.438, 0 0.579, 0 0.73, 0 0.897, 1.143 and 1.558. So we can see here that the uh, the ratio between the low gear and the high gear is about a factor of 5. So in fact you're going 5 times faster um, in the 7th gear relative to the 1st gear. And again reverse it's, it's about a third, 0.336. Okay, so the next step in the design was to convert these uh, decimals to LEGO approximations or LEGO fractions. Um, pretty much with the LEGO gears you're, you're pretty much limited to creating ratios uh, of 2, 3, 5 or 7. Uh, you can of course create any arbitrary decimal using differentials, but in my case I don't want to use differentials for this design so I'm just sticking with the regular gears. So if I want to convert uh, 0 0.3, uh, well that goes exactly, it becomes 3 tenths. So the approximation uh, in back in decimal of that fraction is uh, pretty much exact. 0.438, I've approximated that with 4 ninths. So 4 ninths as a decimal is 0.444 repeating. Uh, and that is pretty close to the 0.438 that I'm trying to create. 0 .7, uh, 0.579 is uh, pretty close to 4 sevenths, which in the decimal is 0.57. So again, it's accurate to do uh, decimal places. Uh, 0.73 I've approximated with 5 sevenths, so um, that creates 0 0.714, again quite close. Uh, 0 0.897 of course is very close to 0 0.9, so I've you know, used 9 tenths for that, so it's 0 0.9. 1.143 turns out to be pretty much exactly 8 sevenths, so that's handy. 1.143. Uh, 1.558 I've approximated with 14 over 9, which gives me 1.556, so again incredibly close. And finally the reverse gear uh, is 0.336 and approximately a third. And I've used the uh, minus symbol there to represent the fact that we're going in reverse. That is uh, minus one third uh, in terms of LEGO approximations. Yeah, so this gives us all the uh, the LEGO fractions that we need in order to create or estimate these gearing ratios that we're trying to create. And then the next step is to convert these into actual gearing ratios. Okay, next step was to convert the LEGO approximation or the, these fractions into ratios that can be implemented with LEGO gears. Now of course you can just take a simple fraction on this and multiply it by 4 to top and bottom uh, and to convert it to a gearing ratio because all the gears in LEGO have got a factor of 4 in terms of number of teeth. So you can just convert that to 12 uh, to 40 so you can implement that with LEGO gears. Now the problem with that of course is that 40 is a very large gear and a 12 to 40 doesn't mess without an intermediate gear. 
So another way of doing it is to split these fractions into products of uh, other fractions, of smaller fractions, and then uh, they, they can be converted directly to gear. So for example, the 3 tenths can be converted to 3 over 5 times 1 over 2, and 3 over 5 is simply 12 over 20 times 12 over 24. So that is one way of creating that 3 to 10 gearing ratio by having these gears in sequence. Uh, the other one I'm trying to create is 4 to 9. Uh, again, you can uh, do that directly with a 36 to 40. But again, it's uh, not easy. Uh, first of all, they're very large gears and they also need intermediate gear. So my preference is to split it up into smaller fractions. So I've created here four th uh, 1 third times uh, 4 over 3. So that gives us that 4 ninths. So 1 over 3 can be created with an 8 meshing with 24. And uh, 4 over 3 can only be done with uh, 16 to 12 um, more easily. Uh, that does, however, create uh, require an intermediate gear that I'll talk about in a minute uh, once I present how to convert this to an actual design. Uh, 4 sevenths, that's uh, very easy. This converts straight to 16 over 28 by multiplying top and bottom by 4. Same with 5 sevenths, that's 20 to 28. But again, some of these need intermediate gears in order to mesh. And again, I'll talk about that once I talk about the actual implementation of these, uh, these gears. Uh, 9 tenths, that's, I've converted that to 3 fifths times 3 over 2. Uh, so again, 3 fifths is an easy one, 12 to 20, and a 3 over 2 is a 12 over 8 I've used with an intermediate gear. Uh, 8 over 7, uh, I've used just 4 sevenths like we had before, which is a 16 to 28 times 2. Uh, so 16 to 28 times a 24 over 12. Uh, 14 over 9 is, uh, I've created a 7 over 3 and a 2 over 3. So again, the 2 over 3 is 8 over 12, reciprocal of the 3 over 2 over there. And 7 to 3 is a 28 to 12. And then finally, this is the simplest one reverse, just simply a third, so it's nice and easy. Uh, it's 8 over 24. So after I've created all these um, different Lego meshing uh, options to create these fractions, the next step is to convert this to an actual layout uh, with the gears that can be implemented. Okay, so before I go into the actual gearing design implementation, I'll first of all tell you a little bit more about the actual gearing selector. Uh, you're probably all familiar with this kind of structure. What we've got here is eight different switches. The switch can switch between one of two different uh, clutch gears. Uh, and that's, that makes eight combinations. You've got four times two. And the idea is that you drive each of these clutch gears um, from underneath by using, for example, another gear. And that's been geared to the correct gearing ratio that you want for each um, speed. So obviously uh, you'd want, for example, gear one here. So you have this one spinning at the speed of gear one. This one is speed of gear two, three, four, five, six, seven, and reverse. Uh, and then what happens is by selecting uh, the appropriate gear like that and that one's spinning then the output will spin at that speed that you've selected so if you then select a different speed that one there the output will spin at uh, that speed and of course you can switch between uh, these different uh, selectors by using uh, this component here you can just uh, mount that on top and that by switching it left to right allows you to select between uh, one or the other and the way you mount this, you mount it mounts on an axle and allows you to move it uh, down through the middle and select each of the different selectors. And of course that forces you to unselect uh, the previous selector before you can move on to the next one. So that means at any one time there's only one gear selected or, or uh, none if, it's, if they're all neutral. And so what that means is that you can select between one of the eight different gears at the output uh, by providing each of the gearing ratios at each of the clutch gears. Uh, so that's the basis of the gear selector design. Okay, so the next step was to design the gearing layout to be able to generate each of the eight different speeds uh, driving these clutch gears. So here's just an example where I've uh, attached 16 tooth to the clutch gear and then that's being driven by a 3 to 5 to create an overall gearing ratio of 0.6. Uh, and this is just an example now, but I thought in order to um, design this layout, it's quite important to get all the directions correct. So I thought it'd be quite handy to draw this first on a piece of grid paper. So that's what I did. Uh, so what I did was just simply to draw each of the four speeds. This is just uh, using Lego units. So they're spaced by two units. So this is gear one, three, five, and seven. And this will be going in the positive direction, negative positive and negative. Now the reason that these uh, directions alternate is simply because of the layout of this. We've got these uh, gears driving these axles so if this clutch gear is going in the clockwise direction then this one is going in the anti-clockwise direction and same with the other two. 
they alternate to keep that output going in the same direction. So gear one, uh, what we need here is an overall gearing ratio of 3 to 10, which is created by a 12 driving a 20 and a 12 driving a 24, so that's that one half and that's that 3 fifth. Now 12 to 20 you can create quite easily, just um, this driving directly in that clutch gear, so I can go straight down, have a um, that 3 fifth driving straight onto a 20 tooth clutch gear, and then to create the half I can go on a diagonal like this with a 12 driving and 24, so that's a half. And then the directions, this is positive, so this will be negative, and this will be positive. So this is where you'll be driving uh, the axle from with the, with the motor, and they'll be driving that gearing ratio to create that three to 10. And then same for gear three. Uh, what we need there is a four to seven, and which we can create with a 16 to 28. Now you can drive a 16 onto a 28 on a diagonal like this, so I've actually done a video on driving gears on a regular mesh, um, regular grid, be able to mesh any two gears, so it's quite a good video to watch if you learn more about meshing gears. Uh, so to create the room for the 28 tooth, what I did was just go straight down with a 1 to 1, and then that 16 to 28 can be done on a 2 by 2 angle like this. And so that's minus, this will be plus, and it'll be minus, and this is 4 7 and this is quite handy so we're driving this axle here with the motor and then this needs to be driven in the positive direction and then this one the negative so i can connect that one and that one with two eight tooth gears uh, then the gear number five what we needed there is a nine tenth which is made up out of two sections a 12 to 20 and a 12 driving an eight and again the 12 to 20 uh, straightforward is just uh, you know spacing of two but a 12 to drive an eight can't be done directly so if you do want to drive, uh, you know, a, an 8 and a 12, so here's the 12 and here's the 8, you can't sort of do it directly, this doesn't quite work, but you can do it with an intermediate gear like this, so you can put the gear there, and then put the 8 there, and then you can have the 8 driving the 12 through that intermediate gear to create that 2 to 3, or a 3 to 2 gearing ratio. And of course you can lay this out in different, uh, different ways, so you can put that there, you can move this over here so you can create uh, different spacings between the two axles that you're after. So the way I did it on my diagram, I went uh, straight down first of all to create that 3 to 5 that was needed and then I can went across like that uh, to create the 8 to the 24 and then the 24 to the 12 diagonally down like this. So this will be negative, positive and negative and this section here creates that 3 to 2 that we need to create the overall 9 to 10 and this needs to be driven in the negative direction so what I placed here was another intermediate gear or well, not an intermediate but a 16 to 16 this is 1 to 1 and then I can drive this to that with two um, 24 tooth gears for a spacing of 3 ok and then finally gear 7 what we need there is a 28 to 12 and an 8 to 12 so that 8 and 12 is actually the same kind of setup as this one and a 12 and a 28 can be driven again with an intermediate gear you need kind of a setup uh, like this where you've got your 24 and then you've got a 20 and you can then drive that with a 12 so this gives you that 12 to 28 gearing that you need uh, to be able to drive um, to create that ratio so the way I did that one then kind of went out the side and then it went down and then down three that's the uh, overall gearing ratio uh, to create that 12 to 28 then I ended up having to go down on the angle like this and then up like that to be able to connect back onto the driving axle so this here gave me the 8 um, sorry the 12 to 28 and this configuration is pretty much the same as that kind of triangle to give us the 3 over 2. So that gives us the overall gearing ratio. So again, this is plus, this is plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. And this allows me to connect back onto the driving axle with two 8 tooth gears. So this is pretty much overall design uh, to create the first four gears for the gearbox. Gears 1, 3, 5 and 7. Um, I won't go through the details of the other side, the gears 2, 4, 6 and reverse but pretty much done in a similar fashion to create all the different gears that are required.
So after the design and gearing layout, it's become a matter of implementing it in the actual gearbox. So here is the final design and implementation. Uh, lots of lift arms, lots of support for all those gears. Uh, on this side here you can see some of those uh, gears for those gears uh, 1, 3, 5 and 7 that I talked about in the design. So here is that 28 to 12, gone from a, an abstract uh, design to an actual uh, practical layout. Uh, at the top here we've got uh, the gear change lever. Again it's got underneath, you can probably see some of the um, switches underneath. And we can go from gear 1 to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and reverse. At the front I've just put on a bit of an engine just for show. So it's a, an 8 cylinder engine just like the real Ferrari as well as a fan, bit of a fan belt. Uh, the whole mechanism is driven by a large power function motor underneath that drives all the axles that finally drive all the different uh, gearing ratios. Yes, yeah, so this is the overall design. Uh, I'll just now demonstrate it in action. Okay, so I've connected the large power function motor to the battery. It'll just turn it on. And now we're currently in neutral. Uh, so of course the engine's not going. We'll just shift to gear one. Uh, so there you go, that's our gear one. The, you can see the piston's moving at a uh, relatively slow speed. We go to gear two, slightly faster. Go across to gear three, even faster. So it's probably the best thing to watch is the, uh, the piston. Go to gear four, faster again. Gear 5, gear 6, faster and faster, and finally gear 7, look at that, and reverse, look at that, back to gear 1, so again you can see this is forward, and reverse, this reverse, so, Show you some of the gears in action. Just trying to see all the gearing moving. Okay, so that's my 8 speed Ferrari gearbox design. Hope you liked it. Uh, hope you got something out of it and enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.